video, I'll first discuss why I don't really like stock screeners, even if I'm a value investor, and then I'll discuss a stock that doesn't have linear dividends, that doesn't have linear earnings, currently it has a loss, so it wouldn't come up in a stock screener. But if I put whatever the company has been doing, linearly divided over 10 years, we would be talking about a stock with a price earnings ratio below 10, a dividend yield above 7.5%, and huge growth. So a very, very interesting stock. However, that stock won't come up in your stock screen. Starting with stock screeners. Value investors like me would love to find a stock with a low price to book value, low price to earnings ratio, high dividend, lots of cash, and everything perfect, with no risk, of course. However, if you put those parameters in a stock screener, everybody gets them. Every value investor in the world gets those parameters. And then, firstly, it's unlikely that something good drops into that basket. Secondly, you must really understand the risks. And thirdly, if something is really undervalued, the parameters don't have to be linear to drop into a stock screener, like the, car, the company that I will discuss now. So the only thing for me, which I think is really the best way to invest, because shortcuts in investing are not a great rule, is to research every stock on the market. Of course, I have time, I have the time to go stock by stock by stock by stock on every stock market. I did it from, for Europe, I did it a few times for the US stock market, and I constantly do it around the world. And this research, stock by stock by stock, has brought me to today's stock pick, which is Sintel. Sintel is an IT operator that sells most of its services in the US, but everything is done in India. There is a company presentation on YouTube, the link is in the description below, so check that out in order to get what the company is doing, so that I think they present it much better than I would discuss it. So, let's look at it from an investor perspective and what's interesting about the company. If you look at the stock price, it has significantly declined in the last year and a half, because the revenue growth has slowed down a bit, and the company paid out a dividend on $15 per share. $15 per share is 75% of the current market capitalization. So this is a company that in 2016 paid 75% of its current market capitalization in a special dividend, all in one go. And that you don't see in a stock screener, because if I would take those $15 of dividends and spread them over the past 10 years, I would get a dividend yield of around 7.5% which would be great for any kind of stock. And it is even better for a growth stock, for a stable stock, for a company that has American Express, FedEx as its main customers. So a very good, good business with a good business model. And a dividend yield of 7.5%. So really undervalued from this current market perspective. Why did the revenue fall? Well, IT services are always cyclical. Companies, especially in a late part of an economic cycle, and Sintel mainly caters to financials, are not that happy to invest. They try to squeeze every dollar and improve the margins. Now, when the cycles, they're going to try to save by investing more in software and financials. And that's why also as the cycles of change go in the technology business, so also revenues for a company like Sintel will be volatile. However, those have been, have been growing for a long time. Just a quick look at the locations, mainly focused on North America, 9% of sales are in Europe and the development centers are mostly in India. You can see here how the business has been growing very, very fastly, especially in the last 10 years, and peaked revenues now a little bit to 2017, but the company is really developing itself in order to provide the best service to its customers, and I think it's normal to have volatile revenues in the sector, and therefore, we, in the long term, we should expect growth. The company is serving digital to improve its value to customers. If you are very interested in the company, then feel free to dig in and see what the company is doing and how it compares to competitors and if they can keep their margins stable. What's very important
important is the revenue has been growing up except for in the last quarter and in the last year. Earnings per share have also been going up. And then you see a drop in 2016 to $0.68. Dollars. This drop is due to a tax charge of $260 million related to the dividend and because they have repatriated a lot of their international earnings. So if we would eliminate the international earnings, the earnings per share would be, and I'll take the expected earnings for 2017, and they would be around 1.7. So at the current stock price of 19, the price earnings ratio is around 10, 11. Operating income, as you can see, has been stable. So, so the earnings per share drops that, that won't show you this company in a stock screener is just due to one off tax charge. The revenue profile, banking and financial services, FedEx, American Express, top customers, Digital services are growing, so the company is heading forward and will probably continue to grow in the future. Smile, bro. Shadi hai teri. Honeymoon ho gaya Jaipur ka Singapore ka. Just a quick look at the fundamentals. The company has increased its liabilities by about 400 million in order to pay the dividends, and you can see the total assets. The first top line decreased from 1.4 billion to 400 million, where they paid out the cash they had accumulated during the last 10 years, and they have taken a loan to pay a higher dividend. The same as Apple is doing, taking a loan to pay for the dividends. So this is a company that's making money, continues to grow, has had some headwinds at the moment, but I think it's extremely cheap for what the company is doing and what are the prospects of the company in the future. And let's discuss some catalysts. As soon as the tax charge is eliminated from the last four quarters, the company will jump up again into stock screeners. And then people will see, oh, look, an Indian company, U.S. company with operations in India, selling software in the U.S., growing at 10 times in the last 10 years, is selling at a price earnings ratio of 11. They are producing a lot of cash because they paid 1.2 billion dividend in 2016, so we can expect the same thing in the future. I think the company won't stay at 19 that long. In addition, the company is mostly owned by the founder, so 68% is called held by insiders. And insiders, they want to increase shareholder value. This is really a management that focuses on increasing shareholder value, not the stock price. So the stock price has fallen very low, much more than the paid out dividend. What has the management started? A buyback program. So they think it's better now to buy back stocks when they're cheap than to pay a dividend. So the management is really looking for ways how to increase their shareholder value. And then we are talking about the management, a very interesting sign from insider trading. As I said, 65% of the company is owned by insiders. And insiders have been buying much more than selling. Net activity, 483,000 stocks bought, 127, 28,000 stocks sold. So insiders really think this is very cheap and now is the time to buy the stock. Let's discuss the risks. Of course, it's always important to discuss the risks in a company. 75% of revenue comes from 10 customers. 22% of revenue comes from American Express. 14% of revenue comes from Street Bank and Federal Express Corporation at 11% of revenue. So if the company loses one of those clients, then it could really hit revenue. And that's a risk that everybody mentions. However, it's very difficult and costly for an operator like American Express to change its IT service provider because another company would have to learn everything. So I don't think they will lose clients. And if you look at their revenue over time, they didn't lose clients in the last 10 years. So that's a very good, interesting margin of safety. Another risk from their annual report is that the company expects fluctuations in revenues depending on what the customers are doing, their plans. So we have to also expect fluctuations in revenue. However, in the long term, the company is focused on growth and will continue doing so. Very, very interesting company. Dig deeper. If you want a dividend yield of 7.5%, as I said, they now are investing $60 million in buybacks, which is around 3.5% of an indirect yield.
sales from buybacks because the management thinks the stock is cheap and the management is buying the company. Let me compare this stock with other picks from this channel. So I always look for a 10% return on the company from earnings, from dividends, whatever, and I expect Simple to grow at 10% in the future, so the average earnings from here will be 2.18. If they manage to improve margins, which they could, as earnings have been much higher a few years ago, then even better. However, I'm always conservative on that. The target, my target price for a 10% return from there onwards is 21. If Sintel returns to a normal market valuation, then we are talking a price of 40, 50 in the next few years. But you know me, I'm always conservative. The company is privately owned, so the potential catalysts are a takeover, further buyback or dividends, accumulation of growth. The margin of safety I don't think it can go lower because it's a good business, stable good business with good customers. It is much better than a few other companies that we discussed, but the price should go much lower in order to reach the risk reward from other companies like Amira, Nelson and others. Thank you for watching, leave your comments below and I'll see you in the next